Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build your own social media app and website using Ruby on Rails. It's going to be a very educational, cool video that will show you everything you need to get started using Ruby on Rails and to build your own website using it. So the type of social media that I'm going to be building is similar to most of the social medias that are currently out there, like Facebook, LinkedIn, X, Instagram. So there's really only a few features that those sites even have, which makes it even easier to build ourselves. So I already have a list of the features that I want to build in this video. I wrote it down the other day. I found the list of things that I'm going to build for this app. So I'll quickly read through it. Build a social media with Ruby on Rails, Hotwire, and Tailwind CSS. The first feature we'd have is add user accounts, of course, because users have to sign in and manage their own posts. Then we're also going to add posts, which will have a caption, a body, which could be text, and then images, which you can have multiple images, maybe up to a certain amount. Although, I, I don't know if there's a limit on like Facebook or LinkedIn to images, but I'm sure there is. Then there's also add reactions, so you could do like favorites, thumbs up, etc. emojis. So that's more like reactions from Facebook, LinkedIn, and yeah, I don't think X has those. X and Twitter just have the favorite and that's it. So it's slightly different there. And then it also add comments. Users can comment on posts and then reply to other comments. And I know someone on my channel has asked for that uh, in a previous video. They wanted nested comments. So that's what, just what you're going to get in this video. Stay tuned. And then the last thing is just a homepage slash feed where the users can view other posts from other users. So it's a pretty simple app. That's what we're gonna build. By the end of this, we're gonna be our own billionaire basically, because all the billionaires have their own social media. Let me tell you a little secret. It's gonna be way better than those platforms because those platforms were built decades ago. This app is gonna be built today. And if there's anything you wanna add in, any feature that can make you stand apart from the competition, it's your time to shine. Because those other companies don't have any chance of switching their whole platform out. It would just be too much of a difficulty for them. They would might as well just go bankrupt or sell the platform, I mean. All right, so let's start off inside of the terminal. So make sure that you have Ruby on Rails already installed. It's gonna be one thing that you're gonna need for this video to work. So you can determine if Ruby is installed by typing Ruby-V. And if you get a number back, that means you're good. Although on Mac, you it, Mac comes with a default Ruby version, which is like 2.7 or something. And that, uh, I mean, it might work with this tutorial, but I would advise you use something newer than Ruby 3, because that's what I'm using for this tutorial. So Ruby 3 and forward is what I like to use. And then as far as Rails version, you can type Rails-V to see your Rails version. And make sure that you're on Rails 7 and forward, because Rails 6 used a totally different system for everything, like for CSS and JavaScript. Uh, Rails 7 just has it all built in in a different way that's a little bit less hands-on, like a little bit, I guess, easier to not know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, now that I have Rails set up in Ruby, I am confident that my Rails command will work to create the new Rails app. So that's what we are going to do right now. So to generate our social media Rails app, I'm going to use the Rails new command. The Rails, the Rails new command is just like this, Rails space new. You can run this anywhere outside of any Rails directory. So you can't run it inside a Rails directory, but you can run it outside. And when you run Rails new, you put the name of your app. So it's similar if you use any other programming languages, you might have like a starter command similar to this. And we can also add in arguments if we wanted to, let's say, change the database or the CSS framework. So I'll leave the database to the default, which isn't really a database. I mean, it is, but it stores it on the disk instead of storing it in a SQL database server. So you guys might want to think about that. You can always change the database later, so it's not a big deal. Let's do dash C tailwind to set tailwind as the CSS framework. And I'll leave everything else blank and just press enter. And boom. Now it's going to run through the flow install all the dependencies for Rails and just get our 
simple project generated. And from there, we'll be ready to get right into the coding. So just like that, we have all the gems installed, everything. So I think we're good. Uh, the command is exited. So now what we're going to do is CD into that app. So I guess I just called it social dash media. That works. And now that we're inside of it, we can really just start the server with it slash dev. And I already know that it will work correctly. As you can see, everything's working and it says it's listening on port 3000. So we can go view that if we open up any browser and then head over to localhost colon 3000. You should see this rail screen. That means that you're ready to start coding. So from here, we can start adding in, like really building out our whole app. But right now, the reason why we're seeing this Rails logo is because we haven't defined a root. So a root is the main page that is rendered for your Rails app. So let's go ahead and define one of those. Let's open up the terminal again. Looks like I have two terminal sessions, which is actually good because I'll leave the server running in the background, at least for now. Although we're gonna have to restart it anyways. But what I'll do is in this new uh, terminal, I'm going to generate a controller. So a controller is how you can render the views in your app. And what I want to do is I want to create a simple view. I want to create a simple home page, right? Like this will be the first thing that you see on our app. It'll be a home page that just describes what the app is, like a landing page kind of. So let's go back into that terminal session. And I'm going to do this through a generator. I'll type Rails G controller. Let me zoom in to make sure you guys can see this. And then we're going to generate a pages controller and a home action. So this is also a good time that if you wanted any other pages, you could define like an about page, terms of service, privacy policy. These are all things that you're going to need in your app eventually. You don't have to worry about it right now, but what I'm saying is this Rails G controller command will generate each view for you and it'll also set up the route. Uh, we're going <laughs> to we're going to change it anyways, though, because the way that it sets it, it uses the pages as a namespace. Anyways, I don't want to confuse you guys with too much stuff. It's just I already know, like, you know, I have the knowledge from coding for a while. So let's leave it bare right now. Let's just do a home page only. So we're going to do one argument. It'll generate pages controller, home action, and then also the home view. Let's press enter. Oh, <laughs> and the funny thing is this terminal session, it wasn't inside the app, so it didn't work. Not bad. So actually, we need to CD into social media. This is a brand new terminal session. Let me see if I can group it. I don't think I can. Can't drag it onto that one. All right, now that we're inside of the social media app, I'll just press up on the arrow. That's how you can get to your like a previous command. And I'll just run it again. It should work this time. So as you can see, it created a pages controller. It set the route. It also created the views for the pages home. So that's everything that we need. Perfect, just like that. Well, actually, it's almost everything. The last thing we need to do is go back into the code which actually we've never opened the code. Uh, let me just stop the server for a second just so I can run some commands and that might be easier. So let's open the code. I'm gonna use VS code. That's the text editor that I always use. Uh, you guys can use any text editor you want. I recommend VS code though, cause it's just the most supported right now. And you can install custom extensions. I'll quickly show you guys my extension list, although I'll probably do a whole video on it. So right now, actually, I don't have any extensions on this WSL setup. So the styling might look pretty bad. Let's go to page home. You know, it looks kind of normal to me. And you can also install themes that change how everything look. I might try to mess with some themes. So I've just been using the default for a long time. Anyways, here's the pages home. So we'd be able to def like if we reload now. Let's see. I think, oh, it won't load because the server's off. So make sure to start the server with bin slash dev when, when you want the app to be running. <clears throat> but I think still, when I reload, I only see the Rails logo because I haven't set that root. So let's go to the app and let's head over to 
in the in the files in the config folder routes to RB. This is where all of our routes in our application is, or it's defined. And if you don't know what a route is, it's like when you go in the browser and you type in like slash something. So usually there's kind of a convention to how those routes are defined, especially in Rails, where it's usually like the name of the post or like the name of the model. So let's say you have posts and then you can have like slash the ID and things like that. So that's what the that's what the routes are. And the root, the funny thing is root and route sounds so similar. I'm always concerned I'm going to like mix it up, which is kind of silly because it doesn't matter. But let's uncomment the root in the routes <laughs> and take the root, set it instead of post index, let's set it to pages home. So it's going to target that home action and it should render our home page now. And we can also remove this get if we don't want that being like an actual route in our app pages slash home. That's kind of weird. So we can just remove that and we only have it showing for the root now. And then if we go back into the browser reload, voila, we finally have a home page. It's nice and blank. <laughs> so from here, we start styling and make our home page a little bit nicer. Although I don't want to spend like forever on a home page, right? That's not what this video is about. So there's just a few things I'm going to do real quickly. So because I'm using Tailwind with Rails, they added this padding. That's why the pages home is like padded. They added a padding actually on the layout, which means it's applied to every page, which I don't really love. So if we go to views layouts application, there's this main class inside the body, which is going to add padding to each page, which could be good or bad, depending on your coding style. I kind of just rather delete this and then just do my own padding. Although that might even be giving myself more work. I don't know. You guys can leave it or delete it. I'm going to delete it because I like making sure everything's perfect, if you know what I mean. So I don't want like a preset padding because it'll just, it gets me mad later. So this is what it looks like when you remove the padding. Uh, the home page does get sent up to the left corner. So we're going to have to work on that. Uh, we could start off with, I guess let's just go right to the code. Let's go to the views, pages, home. And what I'll do is I'll add a class on this div. And I'm just going to try to center things and like push it down a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to do with full flex, flex call. Flex call is going to organize the items horizontally. So they're stacked one on top of each other. And then item center will push them into the center of the page. Padding top will give it a little bit of padding that will push it down. And just like that, we have a center text. Although it still just says this. So it doesn't really make sense. Let's go back, change this. All that social media, but we can't just be regular social media. We need to be like awesome social media or something. <laughs> How about awe? Awe social. That actually sounds kind of cool. Awe social. I can actually see that being a thing. It's like, ah, social. So like, that's kind of what people like to share is the ah moments anyways. Let me add a class. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm literally not gonna go too crazy on this page. I just wanna keep it very simple. Let's go to the P and we'll say like, a private platform, a private, or a secure social platform for connecting with friends, family, sure, all social. And if you want to think of some other things that you could do to spice up your design on like your page and stuff, I'll show you a few tricks, a few different websites we can go to. So the first one would be getting icons. If you want to put icons in your app, I have a few websites for that. So there's hero icon, which has a nice little list of icons that it, you can get SVG, which is pretty nice. And you can also color these with Tailwind. So I really like this website. There's also flaticon.com, which has free options. The only problem is it only exports it as a PNG, which means you can't color it because it's a PNG. So that's kind of annoying, but they have 17 million plus icons. So it's, they just have so many on that site. Here icon just has the basics, which I mean, that's probably what you need for most apps. 
So we could probably think of like a use case for some of these icons, maybe like comments. We could grab like a SVG. And I kind of want to add a little bit like maybe like three boxes that just show how awesome our social media is right at the bottom. So let's style that real quick. So what I'll do is I'll add a div in here. I'm gonna add a class margin top 36 and I'm gonna give it a max width 7XL. So this is just gonna give it kind of like, it's not gonna be the full width. It's gonna be a little bit smaller. We can do MX auto. And what I want is three boxes inside of here. So I'll add grid. Grid calls three, and I'm only gonna want to do that on a medium size, so it's a bit more responsive. And then inside of here, I can add my div. Let's give it a class. I'll give it a width, height full, BG grade 200. And what I'm thinking is like this will just be kind of like a card that shows off the features of the app. So I'll drop that SVG icon in, and this is probably a good time to reload and just take a look at what we've generated so far. This is what it looks like. Eh, I mean, it's not really what I was going for. Maybe I want grid calls four, four boxes, and I can reduce the height a little bit. And then what I'll do is see how this icon is pretty small just in the corner. So I'll add some styling there. I'll add flex to this div. Flex call item center. We can actually do justify center too which will align the items vertically. So now it's perfectly in the center. And then I can increase the height on that SVG, like a width 20. And then I could add in a message to describe the awesome feature. Let's just say like real time comments and connections. That's kind of what it looks like. And I could, of course, make that semi bold text center. Let's do whatever I can to make it look a little bit more put together. And I'll add some rounded on the card. Let's take a look. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. Although, I'll probably have another section in the middle for like signing up, and then I could have this at the very bottom. So, what I'll do is uh, right between this div, this is the bottom cards div. I'll add another div and I'll just give it a, a height, like something to space it out enough. So I'll do 50 view height. Let's reload. All right, it's a little bit too much. Let's go with 30 view height. All right, so now this the cards are way at the bottom and then we could have a middle section where I could have like an option to sign in. So I'm gonna add a I'll just do a message ready to sign up. Whoops, but I want to have that in the center. I'll probably do like flex call item center. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I could add a little bit of margin, or I could just do padding actually, so it doesn't affect the items below me. So ready to sign up, and then there could be like the link to sign in or sign up, which we don't have user accounts. That'll be the next thing to add. So I'm kind of tempted to add a couple more boxes at the bottom. So to do that, I'll just copy this first box, make a second one, reload. Now we have two boxes. Oh, they're kind of too squished together. So I'm going to add some gap on this top level. Maybe I'll reduce it back to grid calls three and add a gap eight. All right. Uh, you know what? I want a gap 16. That's a little bit better. And I could change the text on this one to say something else. Say like beautiful moments with friends and family. And what would be a good icon for that? I don't even know. There's some sort of like happy, fun icon. Of course there's not a happy, fun icon. These are all business icons. I guess it's a face smile. That's the best you're gonna get. Uh, 
Okay, so I'll just replace this SVG. Yeah, I forgot the width. Is it width 16? Probably 24. Let me check. It's width 20, actually. 20. Although the styling, I mean, the sizing is a little bit off because this one only takes one line, this one takes two. Uh, we can fix that by adding a fixed height to the P. That is one option right here. So I could do like height 16. And then that would use the same height for both ones and leave the icon at the same spot. So that's perfect. I actually like this. And then we have space for one more. One more quick box at the bottom. And I really didn't want to drag this out too much. I just feel like it adds in kind of some depth. It shows you how to do some front end work. So it's a good skill to have. Yeesh. What would the next one be? We could stay like stay in the loop or something. And then we could grab this icon. Stay connected and in the loop. I don't know if it's supposed to have dashes between it, but that's what I'm gonna do. And add this last icon. Let's do a width 20. Go ahead, reload. Yeah, this is kind of perfect. And then I want to test the mobile responsiveness by going to mobile. And it already looks like it's pretty good. See, it's not all in one line. But uh, we could use some padding. Let's go back to here. Let's add some PX8, medium, PX4. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So there's still a little bit of padding just in case. And then... On like the super large screen, you can't even really notice the padding, so it doesn't matter. Cool. So we got a very simple homepage. It's nothing crazy. You know what? I almost feel like we're missing just an image, of course, because like just the white background is kind of weird. It just looks awkward. So I want to add a quick image of like some people having fun. So I get all of my free images from unsplash.com. It's just the best website that I've found because you don't even need to log in. You can just download the ones. Some of them are paid. They make you upgrade, but most of them are actually free. So I'm just gonna look up like people having fun and just take a picture, put it on the website. Uh, obviously I need to find a free one. None of these are free. None of the ones with multiple people are free. Guess we could do this one. Or even this one, like a group of people walking. Or how about this? This one's actually really good. Although, the only thing is the orientation. I only really want, like, the bottom part. Oh, this one, this one might actually be perfect. Look at how happy these people are. All right, let me download this picture and I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it over to my app assets images folder. So right here is where you put all your images in your Rails app. And I'm going to rename this to happy people. Although with Unsplashed, you do want to give these guys credit, of course. So you'd want to credit them uh, with their name and everything. Although I don't. I can't read this, so I'm just going to say that it's free. No. <laughs> I'll credit him. Although I don't think I'm going to release this app. Anyways, let's reload. Let's try to add that image. I'm, I was thinking at the top. Like, people are happy at the top, and then it kind of merges into this, like, social thing. So to do that is actually interesting. Because it, it leads me to think, like, how would I want to program is and there's a few couple ways so I could just put the image at the top I could do that I could do image tag I guess I might as well put it inside the div but I know I'm gonna have to remove that padding top but uh, we don't really have to think about it now so let's just do an image tag like this this is how we can get our image from the asset folder and all you have to do is just put in the name the file like you don't need to do slash images because and Rails, all the assets automatically get put on like the default namespace. 
we can do is happy people dot jpeg just like that reload and boom we have these happy people but now it's kind of taken over the whole page and just like i said there was that padding at the top so we could do is let's remove that padding top now because we have the image inside and now if we reload no more padding but there's still you know it takes a while to see the content so actually we have a couple options here one option is even to just set a background image so instead of putting an image tag uh we could actually put that padding top back and just put a style background image url and then pass in this is kind of how you have to do it like asset paths and then we could actually set the background for the whole page but you know what that doesn't look too bad right there and on that div let's just add a min height screen so that by default it'll take up the full width of the screen and then this is kind of good i think so the only thing is that you can't really see the text that well so that's something that you'd want to figure out how could you make the text stand out more it might even be just changing the color of the text you could try making some really bright Let's just try it first, like these first two. We text indigo 500. See, you still can't really see it. We could obviously, we could take the all social and put it a little bit higher up. Yeah, or we could actually, we could do, we could try to mess with the styling on the image. So I think the way that you do this is BG top. I wanted to make it like focus more on the top. Although that didn't really do anything. I think I can also make it zoom in. BG 150%. Yeah, it did zoom in and then I could do BG top. So to like focus on the top of the backgrounds. Although that didn't really work. So if you're ever struggling with stuff like that in Tailwind, just look up the Tailwind CSS docs. And then you can look up whatever you were trying to do. Like for me, what was I trying to do? I was trying to zoom into the backgrounds. Let's look at backgrounds. And I'll see what classes they have. Okay, background position. This is what I was trying to do. See BG top, but it wasn't really working. You can also do BG size. So that one might be a good one. We could tell it to cover. Like BG cover, but then also top. Well, it's basically the same thing. I know one way we could fix this is by increasing the height of the div to an even larger amount, which should offset the image. So if we said like height is 150 view height, which means that's a page and a half, it would automatically resize everything. And now as you like zoom down, you'll see it's actually a little bit zoomed in. So we can do again, we could change this to a height of 200 view height. So two pages. And now it's really zoomed in. Really, really zoomed in. But you might like this. I don't really, I think I like the other one better. And now that's 50 view height. Actually, that might be, a, this might actually be a good vibe too, now that I think about it. Oh wait, no it's not, because I'm, I'm changing the size of the whole page which means these elements are kind of like going out of bounds in a sense which isn't that's look as you scroll down i mean you can see it but that's usually not something that you want to do so i was actually like changing but in a way i kind of would like it if it just cut off there now that i think about it so maybe I will just to go height 50 view height. The only thing is that these cards are now hanging off the bottom. <laughs> Reload. Another thing we'd want to do is change this height 30 view height on this ready link. I don't think we need that anymore. And then these cards are 
definitely out of bounds. And the way that you could check even the bounds is by doing an overflow dash hidden, which will hide any content that's outside of the div. And as you can see, it hides those cards. That's not good. So what we'd want to do is if we wanted to, like, let's say this is how we wanted to set up. That's fine. We could leave the top part and then we could just make these comments actually absolute. And the way that we could do that is actually, let's have another div right here. Give it a class relative. This is at the very bottom of that. Or maybe we want it on the outside, actually. Even better. Because then it wouldn't be overflowing on that div. I reload now i mean that's even fine too just to have it down here but if we wanted it to be like the way that it was kind of hovering in between the two elements that's a cool effect what we could do is we have our, our relative div here now on the inner div i can add absolute top zero if we reload so when absolute i was expecting it to go up higher but I wonder if I have some padding. Yeah, look, we have margin top 36, so that would be interfering. So let's reload. Now this is what it looks like with top zero. Uh, another thing is that uh, now the elements got shifted to the left, which means the MX auto is not taking effect since it's absolute now. So what we have to do instead is use, uh, you can actually do flex justify center on the top level. And that'll actually still work, even though it's absolute crazy enough. And then what we can do is, since it's still not overlapping, the reason why is because I'm using top zero, which means it's perfectly aligned to the top of this div. All we have to do is shift the offset a little bit by doing, let's say, negative top 16. Reload, and now we have the comment cards going right over the image, which is pretty nice. Although the words are still kind of hard to read because of the people's faces. Uh, we can try to keep like working on this. So one thing that I might do is increase this div with the image up to let's say 60 view height. Make it a little bit larger. Now the cards come down a little bit. The text is still the same, so that's not really great. We have this stuff here, BG cover, BG top. Let me see if I remove that. What it what does it do? It actually doesn't do anything. Oh, this is what it looks like on mobile too. We only get one guy. That's silly. So that's one reason to use BG cover. Because if we reload, now this is what it looks like on mobile. It actually covers the whole page instead of zooming in. So that's kind of nice. The only problem is that literally just this text, it's overlapping with this lady's face. And I feel like that's not very nice. So what, what do we do? There's a couple options, I guess. We could try, <clears throat> there's backdrop blur. Oh, I think that works better if there's like a card. I mean, it kind of does work, but it adds that there's like an obvious difference. So let's say I added this to both pieces of text. Or wait, I meant to add it to this one. <clears throat> All social. I mean, yeah, it kind of just like blurs it out, which is interesting. I think we could probably just add a card around this whole content and then blur it. That might look slightly better. So to do that, just add another div here. Class is going to have this. And then let's wrap all of our content nicely inside of this div. Reload. And now we should be getting blur. Yeah, there is like blur around the whole object, which I guess that's cool enough. Although now we're blurring the lady's face, which I didn't really mean to do. Another thing we have to do is add our flex class back. So flex, like to call item center. The styling got all like off centered. Let's reload. There we go. It's back. I mean, I guess it's fine, but it, it does blur the face. We could try to figure that out later. For now, I might just change the, the color because this color seems a little bit just off. So let's go like text. We want it to stand out 
You can try just doing like a, a lighter color. Hmm. Maybe another cool trick. I can show you a trick where you can set a background inside of for like the color of the text you can have a background or gradient or even an image to do that you could do this bg clip text and make the text transparent and that's really it and then you can set a, a, a background of any kind so i'm going to do a gradient from purple to pink pretty sure that's it reload and boom you have a gradient as the backgrounds so that already kind of spices it up a little bit. Cool, 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 cool. So now we have this ready to sign up. You know, I think this text, maybe we'll just make all the text lighter. Still kind of hard to see though. Maybe it just needs to be bigger. Let's go 2XL instead of 1XL. Be lighter it should be darker i don't even know but we could also add padding around the object with the blur so it adds a little bit more of like see it's blurred to a certain degree around the object although it's funny because it doesn't even look like it's blurred on the parts where there's not people which is interesting but it might just be just how the how the graphics come out afterwards. All social. Yeah, we can work on the styling. I don't want to really like spend too much time here. So let's leave it. Let's replace this ready to sign up. That's where we'll put the sign in links for now. So right now we don't have any user accounts, which is the funny thing. I made this whole list. I went through it at the beginning of the video. It's 30 minutes in and all we've done is build a home page. But that's what it's like when you're coding. That's what it's like with software development. Things end up taking more time than you expect. If you get sidetracked especially. But I think this looks pretty good. Like I'm happy with the work that I put in here. But obviously now we're going to get to the rest of the items on the list for today. Now that we have this simple home page set up. The next thing that I'm going to build is the user accounts and there's a couple different ways that you could do that there's gems that we could use you could also build your own solution just using models and there's a built-in password of uh, thing and a session generator already built into rails but for this video we are going to use the most standard gem which is device which will allow us to add users to our app very easily We'll get the sign in, sign up pages, and even the edit pages and everything created without us having to do very much code at all. Just a few commands to get it set up. So, to add the device gem, what we can do is go into our terminal. So, I need to go back into that app. And now, what we're going to do is run a bundle add space device. Just bundle add device, run that. It's going to add the device gem. And all right, now that we have device, we can run the rails g device colon install command. Just like this, what it's going to do is it's going to create an initializer, a localization file, and then it'll also give you some next steps that you can do. So the first one is uh, it's to make sure that you set up your action mailer with the correct link. Uh, it's just so that when they use a when they send a link to sign up in the email or something it'll still work but i'm not going to worry about that right now the second one is having a root which we already do have a root uh, third is setting up flash messages in our app which right now we don't really have that so to add flash messages it's really simple what i'll do is i'll take that code from right there and i'll go into the code go to app views layouts and then in the application is where we would render our alerts usually at the top of the body. And what I like to do is put this into a nice partial. So I'm going to render layout slash alerts. 
and then I'll create that new partial inside the layouts folder. I'll create a new file that will be called underscore alerts.htmldrb. And inside of there, I'll put this default alert and notice code from device. Although this isn't going to be styled at all, it's just going to be blank text displayed at the top of the page whenever there is a message. So we probably want to style that later when we complete our app. Because, yeah, you definitely want to have more customized alerts than that, than just text. Anyways, I'm going to leave that for now. And we can move on to the rest of the things we need to do for installing device. So the last command is to generate the views, which will give you the views for sign in, sign up. Now you don't have to do this because it'll already have the views available, but they're styled really badly. So that's why you usually generate the views and then customize the styling to make it look better for your app. Now what I did is I created a gem called Tailwind Device, which gives you a quick start for the sign in, sign up pages. So what we can do is we can add that gem. There's another gem, I'm going to do bundle add tailwind underscore device. I'm just going to add my gem real quick. Now that we have the gem, we can run Braille's G tailwind underscore device colon views. This will generate all the views as you can see. And they're going to be styled with tailwind. So from there, uh, we can, the last thing you have to do is generate the model that you're going to be using with device. That's the cool thing about device is it's not just limited to a user model. You can have a, you can have like multiple models and you can also call them whatever you want. So let's say you wanted to have like a player model if it was a game or let's say like owner if there was some sort of like Airbnb kind of app. You could do all of that with device. For us, since it's just a social media app, I feel like user is a fair <laughs> user is probably a good term to use it's a user of our app uh, if you wanted to do some sort of special term like maybe your people are called like tweeters I don't know doesn't make sense anyways I'm just gonna stick to the standard user model so to create our user model you can type rails G device and then the name of the model so I'm gonna put user doesn't really matter if it's capitalized or not and then that's really it just press enter it's going to create the user model. It's going to do a few things like create the model, add the migration, and it's also going to set up the routes or <laughs> the routes for signing in and signing up as a user. So the last thing you have to do is just migrate the database with Rails DB migrate. And we are going to want more fields on this, but I'm just going to quickly test this out to see if everything worked properly. Because from here, we will have a functioning user account system. Let's restart the server with bin slash dev. And I'll go back in the browser. We actually don't have any links to sign in, but we could manually go in the URL and go to slash users slash sign in. And we'd see that we do have a sign in page, which would work. Well, I'm pretty sure it would work. So I can test this out. Log in. Oh, whoops, I forgot I'm trying to create an account instead of, log instead of login. Okay. Sign up. Here's that basic alert. Like I said, it's just plain text, but it says, welcome, you've signed up. That's pretty awesome right there. With, in just like a couple minutes, you can have user accounts working in your app. That's what I love about device. We don't have to mess with creating any controllers or doing anything like logical. It was just very easy. So now what I might do is just add in a sign in and a sign up link to the homepage. So to do that, we can go back to the code, go to views, pages, home. And then right here in this div that's empty, that's actually where I was going to put the sign in links. So let's change it from flex call to flex and then we'll do justify center item center. So this will kind of put the links in the middle and then let's do a link to tag. So this is in Rails, you can do link to, and it'll create a link. All you have to do is put the text. So for us, it will be a link to, <laughs> why is my mind going blank? Oh wait, link to sign. It's either gonna be sign up or sign in. So I guess let's do login. There's like multiple ways that you can say, it. you can say sign in, login, or you can say sign up or create an account. 
there's like a few ways that you can kind of write it. It's whatever terms you want to go with for your business. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But I'm going to do login and then I'm, the, you have to specify the URL to the path that you're going to go to. And the cool thing is device has the URLs built in. That's why we were able to go to the slash user slash sign in. So to get to the sign in path, it's the new underscore user registration path. And if you use a different name for your model, like if you use the, it wouldn't be user, it would be the name of that model. So that's one thing you should try to remember. So now that we have the login link, it's just gonna be a very simple text link. So of course I like to style the links. So I can add a class and I'll do some 10 win styling. Let's do like a blue kind of look. Oops, and I'll do light text. Rounded. What that looks like. All right. I kind of want it a little bit larger. So, like, let's do width 32, text center. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Maybe like padding Y3, padding X2. Well, since we have the width, we don't even need the padding. And then let's do another link. I'll just copy paste that and I'll change the text to create account. And oh, actually, I had the the links wrong. So for login, it should go to new user session path. Whoops. And then create account is going to go to new user registration path. We reload. Now we have two links. Obviously, the create account is has some styling issues. Oh, because I set the width. Let's try to get rid of that width now. There we go. It's a little bit better. I can add some padding. So I could do margin or I could just, since it's using flex, you can have a gap, specify the spacing between the elements. That's pretty cool. Now, one thing you, we can notice is there's that blur background, but it looks like it's kind of cutting off right at the bottom. It would probably be better if it had like a little bit more padding. So we can go up to this div right here, add P4. I know people are asking me to zoom in the code more. I know it must be hard, especially on phones, but let me know if this is, looks good to you guys. Let's reload. All right, I think I'm happy with this. So log in, create account. Obviously, I don't like having buttons being the same color for something like this. So what I'll do is for create account, I'm gonna take inspiration from GitHub and I'm gonna do a transparent background. So I mean, not transparent, but like kind of transparent, just no background, and then I'll do a border. That's a good way to kind of switch things up. So I'll do the same color, but just as a border. And that's kind of what it looks like. We could also have the text, instead of being white, it could be the blue text. Or I guess it was just really light blue. There we go, that looks actually pretty nice. And then you could have hover states too, or when you hover on create account, it does something cool. Like for now, we could just fill in the background. With, let's say a lighter blue color. Something simple like that is kind of cool. And then log in, we could have it do something. Uh, let's try hover BG blue 600. Go a little bit darker. So I might want those to match up. So maybe on hover it'd go 600. And then we could change the border to blue hover border. 200. Oh wait, it's getting to the point where it's so hard to see this, the tailwind because it's like going off the page. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, let me make sure it's right. Okay, this looks good. Reload. Oh wow, that's a lot of blue. But the border does change, you just can't really tell. I think it's too dark, so let's switch it back to like a 300. Cool. Log in, create account. We could also make it kind of, uh, there's a, well, one thing I was thinking is have it do a little uh, bounce up. So for that, you can do hover, what is it? You can do scale 105. So it gets like a little bit bigger. That's probably what I'll do. And then I'll have a transition because right now it's kind of like, it's switching the styling so fast, but you can add easing. So if you say transition all, and then you set your duration, 
So 250 milliseconds. That's how long it'll animate. And now it has that smooth kind of thing. That's just one simple way you can do animations with CSS, but that makes your site so much more interactive already. Like when you hover on stuff, it flips around or it does this. That's what I love about front end. Uh, oh yeah, right, we're already signed in. So let's check out the experience as a logged out user. You can do that by going to incognito window or just opening another browser. All right, so I'm in incognito. Let's go to login. Uh, one thing is because, uh, so my gem, I probably should just end up fixing this somehow, but because remember that built-in padding, my gem is expecting you to have that padding. So the way that we can fix it is by going to the sessions new and just adding back the padding in each of these spots. I'm just gonna do 24, although I usually do 36. I'm switching it up today. Let's reload. Okay, that looks pretty good. Create an account is also has padding. Forgot your password, doesn't have padding, so you can do that. Passwords, I think it's new. Well, really all these pages are gonna need padding. But that's something that's not too hard to add in. And it's just cool that you already have this form that works right out of the box. And of course you can style this. Like that's probably what we might want to get into is when you create an account, this kind of like, you can't even tell that you're on the same website anymore. So it might be nice if, even if we just took that picture and put it on this page, that would automatically make it a nicer experience. So right here, that's the sign in, that's the sign up page. So let's go over to the views. By the way, if you didn't know which folder I was editing, I don't think I mentioned it, but it's the device folder. That's where all the styling got added. So we have a passwords folder. That's just for like, forgot your password and edit your password. Registration is for sign up and then editing your account. Uh, sessions is just for signing in. And then the shared has a few things that are shared in the forms and in the throughout the different views for device. All right, so what we're gonna do is quickly, we're gonna add that background from the homepage. So let's go back to the homepage and just see the code. It's very simple. So I'll, I'll actually just copy this style part and I'll go over to registrations new and drop it right here on this top level div. And let's go back to the form, reload, and bam, yeah, this automatically looks so much uh, like, I guess more interesting, although it is kind of creepy at the same time. We probably want to add in some text and some other kind of explanations. Although I don't know if I want to do that right now. Let's go to the sessions new. Let's add that same picture. You know, it's not bad. It's like happy people just, they can't wait to get on the platform. <laughs> you probably want to definitely credit all these people though, or they might get mad. Their face is the image of this next gen platform. Anyways, so now that you would create your account, let's go ahead and do that. Check Indigo. Of course, there's that six character minimum sign up. So now that you have signed up, what I would do is I would totally switch this up. This is just from the outside. This is what people see before they sign up to your platform. So now we're gonna build the internal social media app, which is all the things that I have on my list, which include the posts, reactions, comments, and the homepage feed. That's all internal. So you have to sign in or create an account first before you view that part of the app. But that's what we're going to get into next. All right, now what we're going to add is a page for after the user has signed in, we're gonna have like the main social media feed kind of page. That's the next thing that we're going to implement. So right now, let me just quickly create a new account. Call it Coco, because that's the name of my dog. Uh, whoops. I didn't get the password right. Let me fix that. All right, so boom, just like that. I'm signed in with a new account. The only problem is it still shows the sign-in screen because we haven't really added anything to change this up. So what we're going to need is a new controller to render the feed page. So what I'll do is I'll create a new feed controller. We can just do that right from the console. 
just make sure that you're inside of the right directory. I need to get back there into the social media app. And then what I'll do is I'll run a Rails G controller command to generate a new controller, which will be for our view. So I'll call this the feed controller and I'll give it a show action. This is kind of a technique that you could do in Rails. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Just press enter. It's going to be a singular controller. So we're not going to have like feed records, for example, uh, like that's kind of the difference in Rails. I'll show you if we go into the code. Oh, wait, it says the name feed helper is, oh, because I, I, I remember I did this the other day, but then I wasn't really satisfied. So anyways, we're going to create the feed controller and let's go into the code. This is what it generated in the config routes RB. It added a get uh, feed slash show. So we don't actually want that as the route. So we could delete that. What we want is when a user is signed in for it to show the feed page instead of the home page. So that's actually super easy. There's a built in method with device. So what you can do is just add in this authenticated method right here and then pass in the name of the model that you're going to check. So for us, it's a user model. So you can do authenticated user and then you can set a new root. So we're going to say root. I'm pretty sure it's like this maybe root and then you have to pass two and we'll put in a feed show so actually that's all you need to do i was going to tell you guys about like there's a thing called resource versus resources but that doesn't really matter because since we're just using this controller to render the action it's not actually creating a url path for the feed so that's good it's just as simple as that in the feed controller this is what it looks like just very simple eventually this is where we will query for the posts related to the user so if we go to the views feed show this is what it looks like just very simple so if you reload we should see oh invalid root name already in use root all right so the problem here is uh, there's already the root so what you have to do is you have to change the name for this user root so you can do that by setting the as key and set this to authenticated user root. So now it's not just the regular root path. It has a special path, but device will automatically use this when the user is authenticated because of this block. So if we reload, now what we see on the main page is our feed page. So this is awesome. So on the feed, this is where we would display the posts. Obviously right now we don't have posts. We don't even have the post model. So that's what we're going to have to add next. And now we can just say like your feed or something. And on this div, let's do a div class flex, flex call item center PT24. That's actually fair. And we can just render all the posts. So for the P, we can just say view all the new posts from your community. Let's reload. This is what it looks like on the feed page. Very, very simple, but we're going to get to adding in all the functionality very soon. Cool. So now we have a feed page, we have home page, we have user model. What is left? There's actually kind of a bit of stuff left. The next thing we could add is like post model. I guess that's probably a good thing to add. So to add a post model, I'm going to do this from the console again, and I'm going to run a Rails sheet scaffold command, which will generate everything we need for this model, like the views, the controllers and the model. So let's do Rails sheet scaffold for a post and a post is going to have a caption, which is just be a string, which means a short piece of text. And we're also going to have a body. So this could be, we could actually use rich text if we wanted to, since that's already built into rails. We might want to use rich text or you could just use text by itself. Uh, we'll do rich text and we'll also have images, which will be type attachments and that'll use active storage to store the images. Oh, and the last thing we need, of course, is the user belongs to because every post is going to belong to the user who has posted it. Now let's press enter. We've generated all this different stuff. This is perfect. We are going to have to also run the command to install action text and active storage. So to do that, we can just run this one rails action underscore text colon install command. 
this will get the migrations for both action, active storage and action text, as you can see right here. Now all you have to do is rails db migrate, and boom, we migrated the database, and we now have posts in our app. So that's pretty special right there. Now if we go back into code real quick, we can check out the models to see what we have generated. So we have this post model, as you can see, it has rich text body, has many attached images, belongs to user. If we look at the user model, this is what we have with device. So it has like the simple model, but we don't have the connection to the post yet. So you have to add that by hand by writing has many posts. And now we'll be able to create posts from the user. Now this will be important because we now have this new uh, routes for creating posts. So if we go back in our app, we can't really see anything like we don't have any indication that we can create a post. But if you went in the URL to slash post slash new, you would see that you totally have a form right here to create a post. So what we could do is from this homepage, why don't we start off by adding a link to create a new post? Just very simple. Let's just go into the views feed show and we can add in our link. So I guess I'll add in my links. I'll put a div for links right underneath this P. Let's do a div class. We're just gonna give it a small max width with full MX auto. We don't really need MX auto because we already have this flex centering everything. I'll just do it anyways. And then let's do a flex inside of here. Item center justify between. And of course, let's do some margin top to push it away from that text a little bit. And let's put in our first link. So we're gonna use the Ruby code to do a link to, and we'll put the text that our link is gonna show. So just say create new post. And this is gonna to go to the new underscore post path. So that's as simple as you need for a link, but if you wanted to style it, we can add a class and then add all of our tailwind styling. Let's do like a BG green 500. We're gonna go for the green style. Um, yeah, that's essentially this is you do what I do. Maybe I'll do a text screen 50. See what that looks like. Let's reload. We actually got an undefined local variable new post path. Oh, I think it's actually it's singular. So new post path instead of new post path uh, play plural. So let's reload and boom. This is what we get. This is pretty sweet. Create new post. Obviously, it's a pretty ugly button. We could do our styling again, but probably green. is a pretty boring color. So let's do a gradient instead gradient to bottom right go from purple 500 to pink 500 text pink 500 and then we could even do like a hover state where we switch it around hover to purple 500 and then we could even do hover scale and then we could add transition yeah I'm kind of going overboard Obviously the tailwind, it's weird that you have to write like so many stylings and like reuse it, but it comes out pretty good. Look at that. So we have the color switching and you can kind of zoom in on the button. And when you do click create new post, it brings you to the new post form, which is just awesome. So of course there is that weird padding thing. So let me add in some padding on that post, which is funny because every time at the beginning, <laughs> I always remove the padding, but then I just add it back on each page. Which seems kind of like maybe like tiny brain, but whatever. I'm having fun. And usually, like when you do go into the styling, it's better to be able to do it yourself. And also, we could add our own. Guys, if you wanted to, you could go to the application, add back that main, or just put a div around the yield that has margin or like padding and stuff. Anyways, create new post. This is what the form looks like. Obviously, it's not very pretty at all. But there's a few things we have to switch up. So we have caption, body, images, and then we have a user field. So we shouldn't show that on the form. That's just something that the scaffold adds in. So what we'll do is let's go to the views, post underscore form partial, and let's remove that user ID field and label. If we reload, we have a little bit more of a slim down form, which is pretty cool. And yeah, so this should be fine to post uh, post, but there is a few changes we have to do to that controller just to set up everything correctly. So let's go back in the code and go over to the app controllers post controller. And if you look inside of here, uh, we'll see that we already have all the code here for setting up our post, but you might notice that there's no connection to the user inside of here. 
The only place that we were expecting a user was in the params, but you wouldn't want to send your user ID through the params. That's just silly since we already have a user saved uh, like on the session in Rails with device and everything. So what we'll do instead is on the new post, when we say at post equals post.new, instead of doing that, we're going to reference the current user. Do current user dot post dot new. And we're able to access the post because we added that change to the user model. So if you guys mix, miss that, make sure that you add this has many posts to the user model so that you can call user dot post. And then the same thing would happen in create. You know what, let me just copy this. So when you create, you're going to create it off the current user. When you update, so this is actually going to be updating off the post, which is in this set post. But this can be kind of dangerous. You gotta worry about authorization. You don't want people to be able to update other people's posts. So almost a better option would be to change the set post. So what I mean is for the show page, yeah, you might want that to be public, but for all the other ones, use the current user instead of at post. So we're, we almost need like two methods. I think what I'll do is I'll just copy this code, drop it in on the show, because that's the only action that we're going to be finding the post off of global. And also the index, see we're referencing posts off of the global state. Now, I don't even know if we're going to use this, but this is the change I'm going to do. And then for set posts, let's remove show. So it's only edit, update, destroy. And then in set posts, we can actually uh, put this back, but then find it off the current user.posts. Now we could even change the method to make it less confusing, like set current user post or something. And all this is doing is just setting app post for the current user. And then for the show, we're doing it manually. It's a little bit confusing, but we could always refactor this later. So actually, I think this is pretty much all we needed to do to change in this post controller. So now we should be able to just go back onto the page and create our first post. So let me go get to this. Say, hello world. I am a developer who loves writing the rails and having fun with Ruby. Oh, and then we have the images option. So yeah, I should have some good images, probably just some anime GIFs for my beats, but I'll drop those in. And let's go and create our post. It's one click. What's happening? Why is it slow? Okay, that's weird that it's going slow. I almost feel like, oh, now it finished. That was weird. Maybe, I don't even know, it, like uploading the image took a second or something. Cool, so we just created our first post. This is what it looks like. Congratulations. So that's what you get with the scaffold. This is kind of what your page looks like. It's just the most simple HTML app you could imagine. Obviously, we'd probably just redo this whole thing. So to do such a thing, I mean, also the show page is something that we could worry about later. I think the most important part of a social media is actually the feed. And right now we're not even showing posts. So I just posted my first post, I don't see it. That's not a good feedback. So we need to go and set up showing the posts on that feed page right away. So let's go over to the controllers feed controller and I'm gonna define an instance variable in here called posts. And I'll just set this to post all for now. So we'll just show every single post that is in the database. So now let's go back to the views feed controller show. What we'll do is right underneath this div we're going to start rendering the posts. So I'm going to create another div, give it a max width, whatever our width is going to be. I think 5XL might be good because I want to have like a centered kind of feed. That's what I see on uh, basically most of the platforms. It's like a centered post. We're going to do this max width and then we'll do, uh, let's just say grid, but I won't do any columns, which means there will only be allowed one item and they'll stack on top of each other. And then you can do gap to spread those items out. Then we can do is we can loop through the posts. Let's say at post.h2, or actually we could loop through or we could just render 
as a collection. That's another method in Rails. You render partial, and we're going to have a post partial, and then set the collection to at post. That's kind of a slimmer way to write it instead of saying post dot each and then render post with post. All right, so now we're going to need a post partial inside of the feed. So I'm going to create a new file, call it underscore posts dot html dot erb. Although we already have a post partial in the posts form, which I don't think we'll use because it's just simply like listing out these different things. Like it's not even styled, but I don't want to have a conflict in the names. Although that doesn't matter. It's just more for like for your thoughts, you know? So maybe I'll call it like feed card. I don't know if that's even better. <laughs> or since it's already in the feed controller, we could call it card. We do new file underscore card. Or actually, it would be better to do underscore postcard. How about that? And it's going to be dot HTML to ERB. The only thing with doing something like this is now with the collection, it's going to think that it's supposed to be called a postcard because that's. <laughs> Wait, a post. A postcard is something that you send to people when you're traveling. That's funny. It's more like no space. So no, we're not rendering a postcard. This is so silly. All right, I'll just call it underscore post. Oh, and it has to be dot html dot erb. I'm overthinking this, guys. All right, let me remove the po the card. There we go. And then inside of post is where we would render the post content. So we're gonna have another div. And I'll give it, I guess I could do a fixed height. I mean, I probably would want to do a fixed height eventually with full BG grade 200 maybe. You can always change this up later. Then I'm just going to put the caption. So right here, we'll put a post.caption. We're going to have that post variable available. You reload, boom, there we go. So it is working. Although 5XL is actually too large. I think we probably want 2XL to be like the same width as this post button. So let's go back to our show, reduce that a little bit, 2XL. All right, that looks a lot better already. Let's add some margin top eight to push the post down away from the button. And then this is what our post looks like right now. Obviously it's very, very simple. We would improve that. So let's go to the underscore post. Um, I guess most of the platforms, they put the image on the top. So if there's an image, let's just do image tag. Whoops, that caps on image tag. And we're going to pass it in the post.images.first. And then we'll check if post.images.any. So we'll only show the first image for now, even though there could be multiple. And then eventually we could add in like a slider. So you could slide down and view more po uh, images or something like that. For the class, we can do width full height 40 object cover. Let's go ahead and reload. All right, so we have, it's a little bit too small though. So maybe we want, I want to keep the aspect resolution. So probably I'll just do a larger height 64. But the height of the div is only 96, so I don't want to do too much. <clears throat> we can even change this, like height 300 pixels, although that might actually be less. Height 96 is pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's probably fine. And then for the caption, uh, you know what I want to do? I want to round this overflow hidden and then for the caption down here i almost want to add some padding like on this part and obviously you kind of want to think about your ui here pretty smart like you might think how you would lay out the different items i'm going to put another one i'll say by post dot User, you know what? One thing we don't have is uh, any information about the user. All we have is the email password, but we should probably add in username so that you can have something you go by or even full name, like first name, last name. Because right now, all we can do is just say like 
email, basically. Print out your email, and that's not a good... That's not something that you usually want to do on social media, is expose someone's email address. Alright. And then let's go under... We're going to do one more P, and we'll put the body. Or not the user body, the post-op body. We can just render it out. Although this is going to totally overflow. So what you want to do is actually grab the plain text, which I forgot how to do this. I think it's something like this to plain text and then grab like the first so many characters. Okay, that did work. Uh, just in case the body wasn't filled out. I think it's probably best to do the safety operator. Which the safety operator in Ruby is this, the and sign. So you just put it right before the dot when you're calling the method, and if it fails, it'll go to nil. <laughs> Excuse me. This is already pretty exciting, though. Even though it's like this is bare minimum. This is a bare minimum social media app, of course. And at this point, it's bare bare minimum. But let's create another post because it's, it's pretty addicting already. I'm just gonna say, I love coffee. Coco and tea. That's a pretty good inspiring quote. Like, what's up, dudes? This social media is socially amazing. And I could put a little picture. Oh, this is my profile picture right now. Not on YouTube, but on Instagram. Put some images. I even have this image. Let's see what happens if I create a post. Why is it slow? I don't get that. Why is it slow? There's actually an error in the background. Oh, I don't have the image processing gem. That's something that I'll add then. So I guess that's what's happening. It's trying to analyze the image to return stuff about it. Because Active Storage uses image processing gem. So let me go back in the code real quick. Let's head over to the gem file. Is there really... There is image processing. So I bet I just... I don't have the underlying dependencies. So I'll show you what I mean right here on the post. It's trying to render an image inside of action text, but because it doesn't have the library, it can't resize it to the right thumbnail size. So let me quickly look up image processing gem Ruby. I'll click right here. I just need to figure out what I have to do for the dependency. So it's literally right here. First thing, either Mac or Ubuntu. So this is the command that I have to run to install the dependencies for image processing. So we're gonna need image magic and libvips. Yeah, I'm already familiar with this. I've had to install this many times in the past. So, wait, it actually looks like it was already installed. That's weird. Maybe we just needed to restart the server. That's another possibility because I think we had the server running the whole time. Let's reload. And boom, yeah, it does work now. It's pretty cool. This is obviously, this is a show page. This isn't like as styled as we want. We can work on that. All right, so cool. Now we have two posts. Another thing we might want to add is what time it was posted at, even if it's just like how many seconds ago it was or how many minutes, I guess. And the cool thing is there's a built-in helper in Rails called time ago in words. And also the post has a created at timestamp that's always saved. Let's go right underneath. We're gonna do one more P. We have four P tags in a row. This is kind of silly. Let's grab the post.created at and then pass this into time underscore ago in words. This is a method in Rails that'll convert a timestamp, like the created at timestamp, into human readable words. See, 11 minutes. All we have to do is add the English part, or I guess that, I guess minutes is English. The ago part is what I mean. 11 minutes ago. And we could even say like, posted 11 minutes ago. Let's make this a little bit smaller than the rest of the stuff. It is a lot of text in one place. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I'll bring the username down. That's, see, these are like the small things you notice. The reason why it looks ugly is because all of these have the same styling. So we need like the caption to be larger, maybe add in font semi bold, and then the by username, this should be, this should be right before the timestamp. 
and it should also be smaller. And maybe even like a different color of gray. Like lighter gray. So like this is the stuff that you're supposed to pay attention to. And then this is kind of the small details that don't really matter too much. Hello world. I'm a developer who loves writing the rails. And then obviously we need a button to view the post as well. So I might even just stick a huge button, like position it at the bottom right corner. And I'll do that with uh, the absolute. So what I'll do is, because since I just have all this stuff stacked here, it would be a pain to try to figure out how to like actually put a button over here and have this look the same. I mean, it wouldn't really. I could do like flex and then whatever. But I have another idea. Oh, also for this text, I want to add a dot, dot, dot when it cuts off because that I don't like how that just cuts off abruptly. Let's do the dot, dot, dot. And we might even have like a more uh, complex way of determining if the character is more than 50. Show the dots. I don't know, but for right now it doesn't matter. Cool. So let's quickly add the button to view the post. So if you wanted to view it close up or whatever. Although I don't even think they have that on most social medias. Some of them. I think usually when you click on the post, it pops open in a modal. So maybe I won't add, I was about to add like a giant button to show posts, but that, that makes more sense for a blog post or a blog app than a social media. But another thing is when I scroll down, uh, you'll see that this is like directly on the bottom. So I can add a little bit of padding on this feed page. So let's go back to feed show. We have the padding top 24. Let's change that to PY. So it'll hit the top and the bottom. There we go. We have nice padding. Another thing is that uh, this bottom post was actually posted more recently than the top. So we want to flip around the order of how we're rendering the post. So it shows the newest first. So let's go to actually the feed controller. So where we're uh, setting at post to post to all, we can add an order an order by created at descending. So that should show the newest one first. Perfect. We have this latest post, second post. And now the coolest part is right now we're just posting to ourselves basically. But where this app becomes more special is when you bring this to the social aspect. So that's what I'm going to do. Real quickly, I'm going to mobile. It looks like the styling gets a little bit messed up on mobile. The content gets cut off. So real quickly, I can do some quick improvements. Let's go to feed underscore post. So we had this height 96. Maybe I'll just remove that for now. Maybe I'll even change it to a min height. Because like, I don't really care if it, let's say the size is a little bit different. It's probably not too big of a deal. And then another thing is on the show page, let's add padding. See how all the contents like stuck to the side. It kind of looks weird. So let's add padding on the very top. We just do PX4 this is what it's going to look like. And on larger screens, you honestly can't really tell, so we could just leave it uh, just PX4 all the time. Cool. All right, now let's test out the social capabilities. So I'm going to go into a new incognito window. We have two side-by-side -side social medias accounts. Well, we will. We go to localhost 3000. This is what it looks like. So that's kind of cool. Like, there is that block where, like, not anybody can view this feed. Only people who have signed in with the account. So it makes people want to sign up. So let me sign up. I'll call myself uh, tutorial dude. Just love doing tutorials. Let me sign up. Boom. I'm now signed up to this awesome social media and I can see other people's posts. This guy's talking about coffee and cocoa. Okay. Let me make my post. So maybe I'm like a, I'm a real estate dude. Looking for houses. Oh, wait. Looking for clients. Looking for clients. Grow my business. Well, I don't know if this is actually the right place for someone trying to grow their business. But I guess every social media is. I'll just put, like, a random picture. 
Cool. So I just posted. Check it out. I'm a real estate dude looking for clients. And it shows the email. So this could actually be a business social media. I just want to show you guys. It's really up to you. You can program it however you want. This is great. So I don't know if you guys remember, but I wrote down a list for what I wanted to add in this tutorial. And I just want to go through on the things that we have. We have this full list. It's add user. The first thing is add user accounts with device. We can check that off because we've done that. Add posts with captioned body images. You can check that off. Add a home page feed. We've done that, so I'll check it off. Users can view posts from other users. Yep, check it off. So we've already done four of the things of the list, and there's only two things left. The two things are add reactions, add comments, which that's almost the natural next step for an app like this. Because you're viewing your friend's posts, like now you want to react. You want to say like, oh, like this dude's, I want to put a funny emoji for his post. Like, I want to comment and be like, hey, like what's up? So that's a huge feature that we will add next. But this is a very good base to the app. I'm pretty happy at this point. 